Hello everybody, welcome back to Newcastle Fans TV. The first signing of the summer has been completed. Matt Target has joined from Aston Villa for £15 million altogether. So yes, Matt Target is now a Newcastle United player. I've said £15 million. It was two to three million pounds in the January, so we had him on loan until the summer, and then twelve million pounds today. Carl, fantastic news! Matt Target is officially a Newcastle United player. There was a video over the last couple of days on the channel where it, it split opinion whether we should get Matt Target or not. Which side of the fence were you sitting on? Oh, but, like I couldn't be like as far on your side as like if, if it was any more possible. It was. Um, I, I always wanted to sign him um, from from having him on loan. I think I was probably one of few. I don't know how you felt when we first got him on loan, but I said to Sam because I know Sam wasn't that happy about it. Not happy, but he wasn't blown away by, by it. And I, I always said, you know, he's solid. He was solid at Aston Villa because unfortunately I had to. I do have to follow them at times because obviously they get spoken about from the lads in the WhatsApp group. But. Um, I'm over the moon, Johnny, and especially at the price that we've got him at. Um, because I'm just talking to you then, like I've spoken to lads, the the lads at Villa this morning, and um, and they were like, "Oh, he's shit. He's our third choice left back." Blah blah blah. I'm like, "But you were all begging for 25 million, like three four months ago. 25 million. Then as soon as they get win, then it's 12 million. They were all absolutely devastated, and they're like just talking about him being their third choice left back. The only reason, the only reason that they are saying that is because they were so happy with his performances the season before and Newcastle come in, expressed an interest and literally like that, he wanted to go from Villa because Luca Dini was there and he didn't want to fight for his place and they hated that. They hated that. They hated that Newcastle United come in and took away their best defender. Hated it. And now we've got him for an absolute bargain. I'm over the moon, mate. Over the moon, as you can see. Oh, that. Yeah, I can hear it in your voice as well. <laughs> Next time you go to the pub with these lads, see if they want any bitters. Pints of bitters all around, <laughs> I think, doesn't it? All of them, mate. Yeah, every single one. Every single one. But, yeah. But when you talk about Matt Target, and I think Villa fans in particular must be thinking, hold on a second. He's doing unreal at Newcastle. He's barely put a foot wrong. And Newcastle fans, like I say, look at the end of that game against Arsenal. And one mighty target. The performances he's been putting in, Carl, have been steady, consistent. And I think... From a defensive side of things, nothing really gets past him much. Attacking-wise, I think he could improve on. I think, let's be honest. But defensive-wise, Eddie Howe needed that. He needed somebody like Matt Target, didn't he? Definitely. And I think what I like about Matt Target, and I think it really does show, and again, it's, it's you know, obviously we'll be comparing Villa a little bit. I'm, when Villa got Luca Dina, I was a little bit disappointed. I won't, I won't lie about that. But I think we all wanted Luca Dina to a certain extent because... You know, what from what we've seen in it, from him, bar what, what happened under Rafa, you know, he's an excellent fullback. And when there was, was talks that, we were like, yeah, definitely want him. And I was bitter when he went to Aston Villa. But then when we got Target in return, I was like, okay. And the thing that stands out for me about Matt, Matt Target is that he isn't the most pacey defender at all by any stretch of the imagination. But he's because he's so positionally aware and he's so ahead in um in terms of his thought process, in terms of his defensive ability, he's always able to position him in, 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 himself in a place where he doesn't have to utilise pace. He's always there to make a challenge. He puts his, his, his plays with his heart on his sleeve. He's just a consummate professional, is how I'd describe him. He's an excellent defender. And I absolutely agree with you. He, he does need to work on um, his attacking movement. And I think most Villa fans would say that the reason they're happy with Dinia is because Dinia contributes more to the assists. But we needed a defender. We have the we have our wingers that are able to do that. We needed a out and out fullback, and Matt Target has been brilliant at that so far. I think it's a really good point you mentioned about the wingers because Alan Saint Maximum primarily plays on that left hand yeah. side. You don't want to kind of go back to almost the Boy Robson days where you have so many attacking players on the flanks and you just left yourself exactly. in the shit essentially at the back and. I think as well with Matt Target, I think he is Premier League proven. Like his, yeah. his Premier League experience is is so essential. And I think when you look at the type of players that we're being linked with, getting a Matt Target in makes perfect sense because look, they want to spend more money, probably on a striker. There's probably going to be yeah. a striker announcement soon. Midfielders, of course, were being linked with X, Y, and Z. So 
for 12 million pounds it doesn't really change much in terms of the budget as well definitely and i think what we have to be careful of is because we've been there in the past and what we do it, it, we've got the richest owners in the world understandable but i agree matt target for me is the perfect signing for us to take that step yes we we did excellently to finish where we did last season but that doesn't automatically mean you'd like to think we will but it doesn't automatically mean that we're definitely going to be pushing for europe next year or, or be able to do that you know we certainly can't go out and buy or we can't expect to go and get 60 70 million world-class fullbacks um that again could actually come into the premier league and not be as good as they are in, the, in their respective leagues and that's what kind of put me off about not put me off, but I, I, where I kind of um, disagreed with Sam and Fordy a little bit because I think maybe we can get a bit carried away in, in expecting the world. I think um, we've got the right people in Eddie Howe, the right sort of players uh, that we have in at the moment. Obviously, you know, Jamal Lasalle's might move on, but people like that who are around the dressing room are people that you can keep around to slowly build. This is a project. This isn't going to happen overnight. And I think Matt Target is a reflection of that sort of play because these are sort of players that, you also want to, they're not going to upset the dressing room. They all buy into the chemistry and they all buy into the ethos that's there at the moment. You can go out and get Lodi, who, you know, is obviously an excellent fullback, but that doesn't mean that he's going to be able to come in straight away and do the job that Matt Target has done in the Premier League. And it's far less of a risk. And especially at £12 million, pounds, it's, it's a no-brainer. I think that's why we've signed him. Yeah, it is a no-brainer. It really, really is. And again, I think with... Matt Target coming in, it, it just means that well, that's already been sorted. That's that, yeah. that deal can just we can leave that one. We know he's going to be fine. Um, in terms of that competition, you mentioned Lowry. Now, do you see us going for another left back, or do you think Jamal Lewis should be looking at a Matt Target, for example, or do you think Paul Dummett is that man, kind of the next in line? Because I don't know about you, just I know it's a little sidetrack onto the Matt Target deal, but Jamal Lewis needs football. He needs game yeah. time. If he's yeah. not guaranteed that because we've got a Paul Dunn, because we've got Dan Byrne who can potentially play there if we need if we bring in a centre half. I don't really want to move him too much, but I wouldn't mind Jamal Lewis going out and getting game time. Definitely not. And I think um if one thing that we've all, all seen is the improvement of players under Eddie Howe. So, you know, I, I think it would be wrong to write anyone off at this point. And I think, you know, had Steve Bruce have stayed, would have all probably said that Jamal Lewis's time at Newcastle United was pretty much done because one, he'd be hindered by the coaching that was there and he just wasn't able to put in the performances that we thought his price tag warranted or what he had at Norwich. So I would definitely like to see him go out on loan and get game time if he's not guaranteed to be that number two or to to be able to fill in for Matt Target, because I do think that would probably be Paul Dummett just because of his experience and his age. Um, And I think you could, fingers crossed, expect Target to be able to see out the majority of the season. Um, you know, we don't expect Paul Dummett to be playing 38 games a season anymore. Um, but I'd, all, I'd really like to see what how much Jamal Lewis has progressed in terms of what he's been able to do in training and see what he's capable of in the pre-season. So, you know, that, I think that would determine whether he needs to go out on loan or whether he's someone that we can keep around as a backup. Um, but I think it would be Paul Dummett next in line immediately. Um, and I think, Right now, I'd, I'd focus that money elsewhere rather than going out and getting another fullback. It's just nice to spend a bit of money. Yeah, <laughs> I hope we'll get used to that throughout the, throughout the summer, Carl. Definitely, it's. Um, I'm so excited, and I'm I'm really happy that we've done we've signed Matt Target one because of you know the the um, consistency that he's had, but that we're not going out and throwing fifty million pounds that at an unproven fullback because that could have been disastrous. With I'm glad that we're carrying on the transfer ethos that we've had from January. Yeah. Hopefully it continues and hopefully we can keep on making some good signings. But you get your opinions, get your comments on Matt Target is the first man through the door at St James's Park in this summer transfer window. Dan Ashworth has already started doing his work. <laughs> I like what he said the other day, Carl. Yeah. What he said uh, I've not been doing any communication with anybody in, until uh, <laughs> until this has been confirmed. Not Absolutely. Too sure about that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, get your comments in this video. Is it a good signing? Is it a, not a great signing? But for the fee, it sounds like a good signing. Do you agree with Carl? Do you agree with myself? 
like and subscribe to Newcastle Fans TV. And we'll see you all very soon.